Welcome to Blue Marble Geographics Ask the Expert. I'm Rachel Landry and this is Amanda Lind, a product specialist here at the company. Amanda will be showing us a workflow on how to extract trees from LiDAR data. Amanda, take it away. Thanks, Rachel. Well, as she said, today we'll be extracting tree features from LiDAR using the LiDAR feature extraction tool. What this tool does is it looks at the vegetation data, vegetation LiDAR data, and it finds individual tree points to make vector features out of them, but it also estimates tree height and crown width. The data we'll be using today is a random high school in Louisiana. You can see the LiDAR layer on top. If I turn that off, here's some imagery underneath just for context. It's already been classified. You can see the orange for buildings, the brown for ground, and the green for the vegetation. Taking a closer look at the vegetation, I'm just going to focus in on this tree here. We can use the path profile tool and we're going to do take a cross section of this tree and you can see the green for the vegetation over the ground. And this is what Global Mapper is looking at when making the feature extraction. So from this, this is a good way to estimate about how tall your trees are and how wide they are to get a, to get a feel of what you're looking at with your data. Also, another good thing to look at within the LiDAR layer, layer, if you right click and click metadata, you can look at the point spacing. This data set is pretty good, it's 0.2 meters. And we'll want to keep that in mind when we go to the LiDAR extraction tool. Now the extract vector features tool is up here in the advanced LiDAR toolbar. Once we click on that, it opens the, the settings. And within that we have, you can also use it to extract buildings and power line and power poles all at the same time. But today we're just going to look at tree points. You can set the resolution. The default is 2.5 point spacings. If you have high resolution data like we do today, you can do one point spacing. That's throwing back to the metadata we looked at earlier. But if you don't have high resolution, you might want to go a little bit higher, stick with the 2.5. Also, if this is a workflow that you want to reproduce with different data sets, instead of choosing point spacing, it might be better to choose meters or feet or something that's more easily replicated. Minimum tree height. Because we're in Louisiana and we're looking at shorter, more majority hardwood trees, I'm going to bump this down to three meters. But if we were looking at Maine data, which is where I am here today, we would bump that up to four or maybe even five. And this is just to help differentiate the larger trees from the bushes. So we break those apart. Minimum tree spread and maximum tree spread. This is what we mean by this is the crown size and helping break a forest of trees into individual trees. And this is, again, this will vary and fluctuate based on your data and where you are in the world. Three is good for um, Louisiana. 20 would be good for Maine, but I'm, because these trees in this particular place are so small, I'm going to bump this down to 10. Now to test this, if you don't wanna process your entire data multiple times, what you can do is specify bounds. Within this, you have multiple options, but the simplest is to draw a box and just select a little bit of your LiDAR data you can click OK, and Global Mapper will just process that little bit of LiDAR data, and that way you can do this multiple times without having to wait for it to process. Um, the next on the list is point type to use. You can choose from multiple built-ins, or if you have put any custom features in, you can choose from those as well from the point features. But tree has a little 2D, 2D symbol of a tree, so we'll stick with that one. And the last option is a checkbox to create approximate tree coverage polygons. This is along with the point feature that Global Mapper will make to notate each tree. This will draw an area feature to notate the crown size. So we'll go ahead and check that box. And another option that we have is to filter points. If you want to limit which classification we're looking at or filtering based on other values, like keep intensity, for example, if you know that your power pole or power line um, values within this data set have a higher intensity value, you can help notate that and limit that here. We're just going to stick with these standards, hit OK, it processes. And then you can see that Global Mapper has loaded these little 2D tree points. I can turn off the imagery in the back so you can see it more clearly. And also the area feature around to notate crown, crown size. And if we look at the feature info tool up here in the toolbar, we can click on the tree feature in the middle. And we can see the elevation at the base of the tree, but also Global Mapper's calculation of its height. And then for crown size, it's average and max spread. We can also see the same information from the area features. And if you want to get the total area, we can calculate that as well if that data is meaningful for your workflow. Another thing that we can do is see this data in 3D, but because the symbology is 2D, what we can do is go into configuration, styles, point styles, and then under, click on tree for point types. 
And you can see the 2D symbol here is park, and that's how you set the tree. But for 3D model, you can choose from a variety of different ones. Because we're in Louisiana for this particular data set, I'm going to go with simple tree, and then I'm going to click OK. And then we can open the 3D window, 3D viewer. I'm going to drag it in from off screen here, and you can see some very interesting looking trees. Now the trees are scaled based on the height that Global Mapper, calc Global Mapper calculated. We can go ahead and change to a different 3D type of tree, 3D model. I'm going to choose stylized pine, which would be better again for Maine. But I think that's one of my favorite symbols to use. Can zoom in and see where all the trees are around the building. Now it is interesting to note that because of the settings we chose and because of our data, Global Mapper was able to find some of the smaller trees and with that, it also included a few of the bushes. So those are a few of the tools that you'll have to look at and balance out to look at your data. And that is how we extract tree features with the LiDAR feature extraction tool. Great, Amanda, thank you so much for walking us through that workflow. I think that stylized pine might be my favorite tree 3D model as well. Um, I've definitely played with all of them. Great. It, does, it does look pretty good. If you'd like more information about Global Mapper and the LiDAR module, please visit www.bluemarblegeo.com today. And thank you as always for joining us for Ask the Experts. We hope to see you next time.